Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this week's episode, I have this very cool dude comes from a place far, far away. His name is Alex Benecki. If you don't know who he is, you're gonna find out real quick. You know, I have a lot of cool people come through these doors, and Alex Benecki is no exception. As a carver, looking at Facebook and social media, we're always drawn to super talented people, and that is why I'm so happy to have Alex. He's from the White Mountain Carving Company, and I'm happy to have him. My name's Jeff Moore, I'm the Northwoods Carver, and thanks for seeing what I saw. Yeah, Jack. Oh, oh. Welcome, everyone. We're back with another uh, titillating episode of Carver's Champions Workshops. So, we have Alex Benecki, all the way from New Hampshire. New Hampshire, Illinois, Wisconsin, no, <laughs> America. America? <laughs> <laughs> New Hampshire, Wisconsin. <laughs> so he he drove uh, about 18 hours to get here. And we're glad to have him. It's not gonna be like a normal class for us because he's an advanced carver. So we're just gonna work on some of the stuff that he he's missing or wants to work on. Bears, textures on bears, just stupid little things like that. Don't mean anything to anybody but me and maybe him. Definitely. Maybe, I don't know. If he stays awake, we'll probably do okay. We're both tired. Anyway, Alex, you wanna come out here and say hi? Hello. Hello, this is Alex Benecki. Um, for the two of you that are watching, one in Switzerland and one in Canada, this is Alex Benecki. I'm Jeff Moore. And we are, we're not anything. We're just standing here, but anyway, we're gonna have a <laughs> we're gonna have a little a little session with Alex. We're gonna go through some uh, stuff a lot of carvers don't understand. They don't know it because you know they, these guys work, and they don't really they don't know all the fine little crap that I know. <sighs> some people think think it's a little over the top, but. I know you, you buy enough bars. And, uh... Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> buy enough bars, you get tired of it. Yeah. So we're gonna go through the cause and effect, the chain effect, of what makes them do it, how to how to listen and how to learn what is happening as it's happening, so you can stop what you're doing and dress the bar or whatever. Um, so that's gonna be what we're gonna be doing. Uh, he's gonna be here for about four days, and we're gonna. Had a lot of fun. I'm gonna carve some cool stuff probably. I don't know. We do that. Okay. Maybe. 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 Maybe get some stuff done. So do you have a website? I just have the Instagram, Facebook. What's your Instagram? Uh, Carver underscore A-L-E-X-N-H. Carver underscore A-L-E-X-N-H. N-H on Instagram. All right. Yeah. Facebook, it's just Carver Alex. Yeah. Brilliant work, go check them out. A better fact, I'm gonna do you one better. In this video, just look around in these corners. Or somewhere in here, I'm gonna put some pictures of the of stuff that he's done right in there so you don't have to even go look. But it's, it'd be cool if they did, because then you would have more likes and you'd feel, sure. you would feel better about yourself. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> He saw us all. He feels horrible right now. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. So stick around for a few more minutes. I, don't, I can't imagine this video is gonna be that long. So there you go. All right, stick around. Welcome, Alex Benecki. Not just good old Carver Alex off Facebook, but from the newly realized name, the White Mountain Carving Company here from New Hampshire. And it's a long drive, ain't it? Yeah, about 18 hours. Only 18 hours, folks. So did you, uh, and you slept in your truck one night, didn't you? Yeah, I have somebody else's motorcycle in the back of my truck and I didn't want to take a chance on sleeping in a hotel room and getting some good rest and not hearing somebody breaking into my truck. So uh, I stayed in the truck with the dog and the wow. bike safe and sound. Well, that's good and you know he showed up when he was supposed to and uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while Alex is a very talented guy and 
he has a lot to offer and he's here um, well, I don't know. I don't know why you're here. What What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I became aware of your work, you know, a long time ago, mm. and started watching your videos, and you know, learned that you actually have the school here, um, mm. and I became very interested in, you know, having your, you know, your perspective on sure. what I do and how I work, and um, if you could help me evolve that. And, sure. Anything I can absorb off you, man. You got you're super talented, oh, and uh, you know, uh, teach you how to. <laughs> thank you. Teach you how to hold your mouth right, <laughs> say stupid things, and do stupid. Th so, the the one thing, like, if you could pick one thing so far up to this point, um, we've been at this for is it the third or fourth day? Three days. Three days. So, is there an aspect to this class? that you weren't expecting or obviously I think we I talked to you before and you said that you didn't have any expectations which is good <laughs> from my point uh, so what did you have or what what were you you know if, if anything were is there something that you're you're getting out of this or potentially you know missing or um, that you were surprised either did or didn't happen I mean so far it's been like I said I, d I didn't have any expectations because mm -hmm. again what I'm looking for is the perspective that I'm not seeing sure, sure. Um, in my development of my own work mm -hmm. and I knew you know getting out here again it's a big trip and you know it's kind of a pilgrimage to to this work that we do and uh, it's pretty much one of it's if not one of the most important things in my life at this point mm -hmm. um i've had a lot of ups and downs in the 10 years i've been doing this yeah and it took me the past five and a half years to get back into a gear where i actually felt like i was moving forward with my work good um i did some work recently in the fall and the winter that you know i, I felt really good about um and then i mean wildlife stuff is is something that i really uh you know, I, I feel I lack on and, you know, I'm, I'm looking to pick up any kind of techniques and advice to, to okay. just to do better work, you know, uh, in general. And it's, and it's what I talk, what I, most of the time I, I go, I, everybody that comes here has to do the ninja boards and it's all about manipulation of light and shadow. And even though you're a great artist, if you're not thinking about that stuff, you're just trying to create something, it just goes by the wayside. Sure. And, you know, just like when we were working, or just, well, I'm just going to say we're, who knows, I don't know where I'm going to stick this. Don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. I know that came off weird, but I don't care. Um, as far <clears throat> as, um, like with the rocks, and we, you know, you can put the dark lines and you can see shadow and it was cool, but then when you just tilt your saw a little bit at an angle and just run it over it, now it catches that light and it makes the shadow pop even harder and you get all these little riffles in there and and, and it's it, because we're dealing with a small tiny bear you know the riffles have to be super tiny mm -hmm. which i think will dumb those down yeah 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 because then how do you carve how do you detail the bear out when it's that small right and if the bears i've always said this if the bear's accurate or if the eagle's accurate, then it's war it warrants the correct detail, or as correct as you know, whatever. So that's when that's when I get I don't know, like a, a hair at my hiney to uh, like do pen strokes. Yeah, yeah. Because then it, then it starts looking like a piece of art instead of a piece of. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Or just like you're trying to put furring on a bear this big, and tool is not adequate. Yeah, you're not going to see that that size, that scale. Yeah, the it's is going to make you know. Yes, yeah, I understand. I get what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you do them, they have to be tight. They have to be sparse to make it work. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, then you can still go in there with your finger sander and make all your you know. Your That's gear. really cool. I, I I hadn't seen that before. Uh, the details. I mean, I, I use the finger sanders, uh, mm -hmm. but I haven't really. Uh, used it in that manner before where uh it's pretty cool to see the texture that oh, the yeah. thing makes so you've been carving how long uh 10 years in october 
2024. Is it has it been a pretty uh, straight through kind of thing, or did you have to give up and do some other stuff? Or um, I I I haven't stopped carving more than you know a couple of months here and there. Um, okay. But I did I did stop moving forward and feeling like I was moving forward. Yeah. I, I I got sidetracked. I got into the music scene and started doing live painting. And I'm, I I mean I do other art. I, I've been painting. I've been a tattoo artist for. You know, I, that's what I did before this. I stopped tattooing for a living in 2014, mm. and uh, that's when I, like I said, that's when I started carving, and you know, I fell right into it, fell right in love with it, and it was, you know, everything, all the time for a few years, and then that's some personal life crap go on, right, and right. you know, and uh, you know, I kind of did a little bit of a hermit journey out in the forest for five years where I lived in the woods in a cabin. And, um, carving I, still out there? I was carving out there, you know, I, I've always had, you know, some something going on and people messaging me and, you know, orders, stuff like that. Um, you know, I got into the on-sites and I've, I've been doing a lot of those. Yeah, you do a lot. Yeah, uh, it's, it's primarily most of my business past couple of years, so uh, I like doing it. I like traveling and I like working in new places and doing different things and Right. Usually it's a nice place that I'm working at. It's usually somebody's lake house or vacation home or something oh, yeah. like that. So yeah. it's uh, pretty enjoyable surroundings. I think most of us that do this for a living end up in someone's much nicer property than we have. It's like their spare house. Yeah, their so spare like. <laughs> the, the spare house. You spare know, manor. The spare houseboat. And the right. Spare, <laughs> spare couple of Ferraris and a Cor Corvette and a. I got six of them at home. It's Giant really cool. swimming pool right next to a lake, which is always weird to me, but hey. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, we've we <clears throat> we all get to play around and 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 get a little bit of a taste of the better with the well, I don't know about a better life, but how the better half leave, lives their lives, you know. Certainly. You know, cuz what would you do? Like the, I always think about that. I know how much I owe on everything and I'm thinking if I could just have the fence the money that the guy put in the fence that goes around his house, I could pay off my house and, <laughs> and I could buy another Harley and uh -huh, fix yeah. my barn up. And I'm just like, man. Yeah, well. it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing what some people accomplish financially in this life. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of times, well, really, markets are, you know, the markets back when they, you know, got into it, they, they were much better than they are now. That's yeah. Right. Very lucky to have work. I'm I'm grateful for, for the work I do have and the customers that I have. They treat me very well. Good. Um, so <clears throat> so you said, which is a surprising thing, that you have like 30 pieces of cash and carry currently, and you can't. You're having a hard time selling any of it. Well, I don't have um, a visible spot. The, the place I work is definitely in the middle of the woods and where it is I don't really want people to know where it is because I'm not there all the sure, time sure sure um, we will not disclose the location <laughs> of Alex's secret shop but I don't have a storefront and I'm not on a busy road so you know the one thing that helps carving is is being visible especially when you first start you know that's kind of how it took off for me I was doing it in my yard and where I was living at the time I moved around a lot too in the past ten years, and uh, <clears throat> people just started stopping by and then asking for stuff, and and it kind of took off organically. Um, but the pieces I have right now, I was I carved, you know, over the past couple months to do a show in Florida. That um, you know, you win some, you lose some, and this was this was, <laughs> this was a lose some. This is a lose some, <laughs> lose everything. So, so I have a bunch of I have all these, which is a good thing, you know. If I get if I do another event or any kind of thing that I get invited to, I can bring the stuff and have something to display. And so, if anybody wants anything, yeah, I'm gonna, they can, I think I'm going to start putting stuff. On they can wear like where's said. Waldo Alex's shop? They might be able to get a piece for um, I don't know. What is your range of prices? Uh, I've got really small things for 25 bucks, okay. like wall trees, all the way up to, you know, really intricate small pieces for almost two grand. So mm. Everything in between, you know. I got decent size pieces for around a thousand bucks, mm. you know, like five foot tall. That story. seems to be the sweet spot right there. Yeah. You know, not everybody's built the same, but, you know, uh, as far as, um, I, I guess in this video we're going to discuss quite a few other things, but. But right now, I think we'll just continue on and watch what's coming down the old pecaroni. So stick around. Okay, this is day five. Yeah. Oh, oh, five. 
we took a day off yesterday to just go thinking around, show them the sights. And today we're gonna focus on a bear bust because he's showing me his bears and then he says, ah, they're horrible. And I'm like, they're not horrible. They're pretty dang close. All we gotta do is a few tweaks. And so that's what we're gonna do. Today we're just gonna focus on a full size bear head and cross your fingers. This is gonna go good. So Alex uh, never tried a couple of the saws that I had and I felt obligated as a guy does to let him play around with the 241 which he never tried before or the 400 which he never tried before or the 500i which he never tried before. He does have a few other good saws. I think he's got the 261, the 362, uh, 240 or the 194s. Um, he's got some huskies. He's got a few other things, but we're just going to load up my gouge and a couple of things that I know for sure we're going to need. And he's all for it. He's just like, well, let me take this gigantic saw and work it over here and try to put this thing way up. I just put it right there in the slot there, bud. And he's like, all right, I got it. No problem. It's a 36 inch bar and uh, he stole that away promptly and bam. Now we're at it. Now we're at it. So we're just basically doing what I always do. And that is to draw out the size of the head for the piece that I want to make. And literally, we had no idea which way we were going to go with this. It's a fun piece. It's a, it's a nothing. It's a, it's a whatever. You know, it's what we were doing was just trying to get him to understand how to create, utilize the log that we we're working with because a lot of really good carvers utilize the log but in my estimation it's kind of you're not letting the log be the log you're just overpowering it with your thought and then a lot of times it just can take too much time and you burn up all that energy now I'm not saying that you know doing the things the way I do it is the best way but uh, it's it's a, a way I guess it's a way that's the way I do it because I want to get the most amount of bang for your buck the you know the the what do they call that the you know the, the money shot so you want to get the money shot out of the way you want to get the head in there and you want to do as minimum the minimal amount of work as possible with the maximum amount of bang and this is what I'm kind of going through with him currently as you're watching this video unfold before your very eyes we're flipping it around I needed to get behind it with the gouge and we're gonna do some negative space because I think negative space makes art pop it makes a, a, a okay carving into a pretty cool carving it makes a pretty cool carving into an awesome carving so we're just trying to stick with uh, hey um, look at me it's look at me look at me I have these two crazy handles uh, that I just put in there I think it was for accessibility then we just drag it into the shop and I force Alex to bring it in and then comes the I didn't force him I did not force him to do that he just did it and now he's wanting to see how I do my detail and there's many ways to do this okay there is tons of different ways to put detail on a bear and I'm trying like to do the minimal amount of work that will give me the maximum amount of I don't know pop or whatever you want to call it I mean there's there's a million different ways to do this and I chose subtlety over big dark shadows and all that stuff so we've got a lot a lot of stuff to, that I'm you know he's kind of we're talking as you can see and <laughs> He's just digging it. He's he's seeing how this is all going to come to to fruition. He's intrigued uh, by the strokes, and he's really, truly wanting to see this paint job. Unfortunately, um, he never did get to stick around and see it because snow hit, and he had to bail uh, after seven days. Sheesh! I envy the guy. He's got uh, such a humongous um, future ahead of him. And he is like a sponge and he is just soaking all this in so I'm just trying to do my very best as a host as a creator as an artist 
relating to another creative person and showing him how to manipulate the light and the shadow. And I just want to make this perfectly clear. This guy has got a ton of artistic ability. He was, you know, just, just because you can paint shadow and you can draw shadow and you can do all these things shadow doesn't mean that you're actively thinking about it when you're carving. It's like the last thing you think about when you're carving for some reason. And um, I'm just bringing this, so I'm like knocking on a door that he has doesn't even know exists because he's just, everything's very fluid for him. But once you figure this out, let me tell you something, uh, it's, it's amazing. And you go home with a different perspective completely. Now coming up here, <laughs> you know, right here, um, I totally spaced the camera. So while I was doing the blackout of the bear, it's a... Uh, basically a latex that I did and then I just go over it with my rattle can special uh, dry brush and then of course the wife is over there she's drying everything so I can get in there and paint the eyes and put the soul into it and also we're sanding the, uh, the exterior of it so we can get in there and so my wife can go in with the cabots and put a nice coloration on it and really make the, the wood tones pop. And for an extra layer of protection, like I will also coat the painted surface as well, uh, just to get it more richened up. I know it's kind of a weird practice, but I, I do it just to make it pop a little better because the, the well, I, I don't know. I just, there's no because, it's just, I think it looks better. It looks richer, it looks, you know, couple of coats and then sometimes I have to go back over the eyes because it does dim them down a little bit but I've discovered this over the years that um, it's a good way to basically make things match up I don't want to have a dull looking bear and then a rich looking log I want it to be rich looking without being shiny if that makes any sense so it's just a matter of covering all the the you know the base parts and then she allows me to take care of the rest of that, but as you can see, it's looking pretty cool. And I just want to say, hey, Alex, thank you. Check this guy out. I'm just, I just wish he was here to see the finished product because I really was hoping um, he could see it and, and then take this information home with him so he can be better and, and just get to that level that he wants to. Not to the level that I want him to or anyone else wants him to, but the one that he wants to do. And uh, my wife absolutely adores him. I think the world of him, I think he's got a tremendous future ahead of him. And I just can't wait to see what Alex Benecki of the White Mountain Carving Company is gonna come up with next. I really, really enjoyed spending time with you, buddy. I wish you all the best, my friend. Well, well, well. It has appeared we run out of road once again. This is my friend. I named him Nookie. So he's in a nook. This, I, this is, this goes out to Alex. Alex, you're a good sport. You stayed here for seven days, but that's cool. And it shows dedication. And we that just gave us more time to tackle things that might have been problematic in, in Alex's future. So we got to do all kinds of stuff, man. We went and toured around. We took a, you know, he wasn't just here to learn. He was here to like, you know, like a vacation almost. So it, it was really cool. So we did all kinds of stuff, bourbon tasting. Food, we're foodies. He didn't, he, he didn't know he was a foodie until he came here. And now he's just, he's a different dude now. Now, when he left, he was probably 10 pounds heavier, which is good for him. Because, you know, you never know if I ate two cheeseburgers or if I hadn't eaten anything in a week. So we're, we're all good there. Cookie the Bear is a love child between me and Alex. And uh, it was pretty cool carving it in front of him. Uh, he started it out off and then I just kind of took over and because he really didn't know like, where to go and I, 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 he needed to actually see it happen. It's one thing if we do something together a few times and then let the person go and then, then you take it out of their hands, that's different. I just did this one pretty much for him to see how it's done. 
And then, of course, he had to leave before the paint job. But anyway, we had a blast with Alex. Thanks for sticking around, everyone. And uh, if you're interested in taking a class, please like and subscribe. Smash the notification bell. And you can hit me up in the comment sections if you're, if you're interested. And then I'll throw you my digits and we can get this thing. Maybe you can come out and see the Mojo Dojo for yourself. And me and you can do stupid stuff until the wee hours of the morning. All right, everyone. Thanks for seeing what I saw.